Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose statement remains the same to bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. We're into a new year. It's a new environment. Those of us who have made it this far, do not count yourself lucky. Do not think it's because of your money or because of your own strength. It's because of the grace of God. I was speaking with a brother, Brother Corey from out of Barbados, and he was saying, you know, we don't really understand what is really happening. But it's due to the grace of God why a lot of things is happening to us. And because of the grace of God, I say to you today, my brothers and sisters, do not think of yourself more highly than the next person. So I say, stop boasting in your own ability and stop boasting about your future. So, yes, it's a big one today. I'm going to encourage you and present to you what the Holy Spirit has inspired me to present to you today. Stop the boasting about your future. It's not you. You can't do anything by yourself. You said, but you have all the money and you have all the strength and you've been to the gym and you have muscles and you're strong and you eat the right food and you maintain a healthy lifestyle. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do that. So I can make it. I say, you can't make it on your own. You'll make it by the grace of God. Many of us are making plans about our future. And many of us are leaving God out of those plans. Many of us are in school and because we're smart, we're intelligent. In the grand scheme of things, in earthly matters, we can decipher equations. We can memorize formulas. And we can do maths. We're great at mathematics. So we believe that we can figure out everything in the world. But you can't figure out God. And so all your boasting, all your doing, all of that is not, it's nothing. Amen. Stop boasting about yourself and leaving God out of your future. Because God holds everything in his hand. And so we're going to give you all the verses from the Bible to support everything that we're saying. Because everything that was written aforetime according to the same scripture in Romans, was written for our learning. And so you better read the scriptures. There's no dancing and jumping about in the scripture. The Bible is not going to fly in your hands and start, to, and start to reproduce the words. You leave it there, sitting there, it's going to go dusty. And you yourself will never understand and know what's in it until you turn these pages. Some of you now, you have the Bible on your apps and electronic means, but you don't use it either. You gravitate towards who is who. And many people like the gossip like to see who is dating who, who has the most money, who is the richest person, the latest this, the latest that, but nothing to edify themselves about the things of God. And many of us in Christendom, we're falling prey to this. We're fitting in with the world. Forget that God holds our future in his hands. Amen. Psalm 31 verse 15. My times. This was a psalm of David. And David, we like to proclaim a man after God's own heart, but we do not know where that saying comes from because many of us have never read the scriptures. We know nothing about David. Because we are not doers of the word, we are hearers of the word, so we regurgitate some things that we have heard. And believe that you are in tune with the things of God. I said, no, you are not. So David said this, my times, meaning my future, or in your hand, deliver me from the hands of my enemy and from those who persecute me. My times, time represents your future. Whether it's going to be years, whether it's going to be days, whether it's going to be hours, whether it's going to be minutes. Whether or not you're going to make it for another day or whether or not you're going to die. 
Many people don't like to hear about dying. I don't remember who I was speaking with or when, where I heard this. But I said, in truth and in fact, we're all hypocrites, you know. Because we're not really afraid of dying. We're afraid of leaving the niceties behind us. Because if we could have taken everything with us into debt, we would gladly go with it. We would gladly go with our phone so we can scroll and, re and look at things. We will go with our money, we will go with our liquor, and so we see this replicating, this nonsense. People being buried, living up their best life every day, and they bury them with the best bottle of liquor. I want to see them drink it in the grave. Ancient people used to bury people. Bury people with all their wealth, all their money, all their servants. And today we see grave robbers having a field day. Digging them up, throwing them out of the coffin, leaving their bodies on the ground to the elements and running off with their treasures. So if you believe you're boasting about your future, you're going to take it with you because you're not leaving it for anyone, I say you're making a sad mistake. Our time on this earth, our time and this earth is determined by God and not by your own strength, not by your education, not by the amount of money you have in the bank, not by the people that you know, and not by the place where you live. It doesn't matter your social economic status. God has everything under control. Even when Job was going through, Job chapter 14, Job 15 said, Since his days are determined, the number of his month is with you. You have appointed his limits so that he cannot pass. I don't care how much money you have, how much links you have, how healthy you are today. If you are to die tomorrow, you cannot pass it because there's a set limit for each and every one of us. You're saying, but there's long longevity in my life, preacher man. What are you saying? When your time come, I want to see you turn by the hands of time. You may be healthy, you may be eating all the right food, getting all the right medication, all the, all the primary care, all the checkup, everything to keep you in check. But tragedy may struck. You may just fall down, hit your head and you die. You never saw that coming. You never saw that coming. So I said, stop boasting about your future. Stop boasting about your future. Stop pretending like you can do this all by yourself. If God holds on control of our future, he has predetermined, predestined each and every year that we live, each and every breath that we take. So where there is boasting, where there is showing off about I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You see, I cannot preach these sort of things and jump all over the stage and run around, you know. I got to keep you into the things of God, by the things of God, not by my own strength, not by my attitude. I'm not going to shout, I'm not going to scream, I'm not going to tell you to touch your neighbor. No, you touch yourself and pay attention to what is happening here. When people boast, do you know what, what is boasting? Boasting is really someone that is praising themselves, rather extravagant to saying, I can do this, look at me. To praise oneself is nothing but a reflection of pride. To praise yourself is nothing but a reflection of pride and we know that pride is the precursor to a fall. The scripture says what? That pride comes before the fall. You may say, but I see many people in society living their best life now. They're, they're, they're living it up. They're drinking it up. They're driving the best cars. They're doing everything. And they're showing off on every one of us. And I say to you, do not get weary. You may not live see the arty or the prideful fall, but I guarantee you this, that this will happen. It must happen. You may not see it, but I say that you're not there when they're in their secret place to see what they're going through. How many of you know what's under their shirt? Many of them may be walking around with an astomy bag right under there. They can they do not have a regular, a regular uh, body, body function like, like you do. You're seeing the outside of a man because it's a facade. 
So do not look at someone and say, oh, look at him. What are you saying? What are you saying? Look, at, look, I said to you, stop the boasting about yourself. The scripture says right here again in Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a hearty spirit before a fall. And the scripture said destruction, meaning it's going to happen. You may not see it, but I tell you that God is not a man and God does not lie. If it said that it's going to happen, it will happen. The scripture says, Jesus said it in no uncertain terms. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12, it says, And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Are you a whoever? Are you showing off? How many times you have seen people showing off, talking about what they're going to do tomorrow? Look at where I'm living now. Look how much money I have in the bank. Then you see the recession. Then you see man losing their house. Then you see man losing their jobs. Then you see man getting sued, losing all the money in the bank. All the zeros that they had in the bank just come down to one big fat one zero, meaning they're all empty. How many times have you heard stories about the rich and famous and the people who used to live a certain lifestyle? Now they're walking around there, they're begging. They'll drink water out of the gutter. Pride is a precursor to a fall. As a child of God, you do not boast in your own ability. You do not rely on your own strength. So as you, as you navigate this new year that the Lord God Almighty has so carefully placed you by his grace you cannot boast about it because of what you've done you have made it you cannot boast about your 401k you cannot boast about all the money in the bank you cannot boast about the, the silvers you have under your bed you can't boast about the size of your house you can't boast about the clothing that you have. You can't boast about the family. Look at my wife. She's beautiful. Look at my children. They're beautiful. They're smart. And look at where we're living. Oh, I'm so blessed. Look where God has brought me from. You're still showing off and you're still boasting. You still have a prideful spirit. Many people will not like to hear these sort of preaching, these sort of teaching. But I'm not here to, to, to seek the favor of any man. I'm not here to do that. And that's the reason when the Lord God Almighty commissioned me, he said, you shall go and you shall have a studio sanctuary. That means you don't depend on any man. Yes. Your studio sanctuary can be anywhere. It can be in your garage. It can be under a tree. It can be wherever. Because the church of God is a depression-proof church, meaning we do not depend on man for operation. And so no man should hold the church hostage by the strings of the purse. Because the preacher and the child of God is not here at the will of any man, but for God, because God has placed them in charge. God has given them a ministry. And because of that, Galatians chapter 1, this is the Apostle Paul, verse 10 says, For do I now persuade man or God? Do I seek to please man? For if I still please man, I will not be a bond servant of Christ. Many preachers, many of you church people, I like to beat on church people. Like to please, like to please society. I have to do this because if I don't do it, no one will come in. And everyone that's coming in, they're really not with you. Because the moment you preach a certain message and it's not in, it's not in line with what they're saying, they're going to desert you. They're going to go over to the other church. They're going to go church shopping. Many people are in church shopping mode. And worse, this, this age of technology, they'll switch you off. There you go. You have no more views. What are you going to do? Are you going to close down the church? I said, stop boasting in your own ability. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17 says, But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Meaning, he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord God Almighty. It simply means that you're boasting. It simply means that your boasting is not due to your own ability. In this sense, your boasting is really a testimony because you're going to speak about what God has done through you, for you. You're going to share that testimony with your brothers and sisters in Christ. 
Why? Because you want to strengthen them. High and sharpen irons. Do not forsake the assembly of each other. When you come together, each of you, every one of you should leave stronger, should leave strengthened. It's not about, look at what I have. I'm going home to eat steak. I wonder what he's going to eat today. I am so blessed. I remember when I was walking around with no shoe on my feet. Now look how many shoes I have. Oh God, you're so good to me. And the moment you lose one of those shoes, you think the world is falling apart. You only lose one. You see many people equate the things of God, equate the blessing of God with stuff, with substance. And that's the reason the church have to get back to teaching the Great Commission. Go forward and make disciples of all men. How do you think you're going to make disciples? You think you're going to make disciples by jumping and screaming and shouting? You're going to make disciples by teaching. Who is a disciple? A disciple is an adherent follower, a student, a pupil of whatever subject you are teaching, whatever you are presenting. Our job is not to make followers of you, followers of your page, so you can get paid. You're not supposed to tailor messages so you can be paid according to how many views you get. And if you don't get any views, you're upset, you're angry. You're not making any disciples. You're into the viewing business. And if you want to be a motivational speaker, so yeah, go ahead and do it. If you want to get views, go ahead and get views. But I say you cannot do the things of God and pretend that everything is coming from you. It's not from you. It's not from you. When you speak, you speak and you reflect God because you have the implanted word in you. The implanted word is the teaching of God. And once you have the implanted word, you are nothing but a student of the word. Thus, you are a doer of the word. And if you are a doer of the word, you operate accordingly. Romans 15 verse 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient. So you need to stop pretending, stop putting up a show to make Gentiles or to make sinners in today's day principle run to the church because you have a nice children ministry where you put them and you lock them away and give them coloring books and you let them watch videos and movies but not of God and you lock them away and when you meet on Wednesday night or Tuesday night to fellowship, you don't go in the word. You're just having a social. You have your bowling night. You have your, 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 your whatever night. Your bridge night. All those different nights. You come to church on Sunday morning. You have a concert. And then you have five minutes pep talk. Oh, God is so good to us, my brothers and sisters. I wonder what you would have been saying if you were being persecuted. What you would have been saying if you're in some of those countries when you are killed for your belief. What would you be saying? Would you say that you're being blessed? You see, the boasting that mankind Boast is not of God. Boasting is evil. Boasting is nothing but things of the devil. I will say that with no apologies to no man. Stop boasting about your future. You do not control your destiny. That is a mindset of the world. Me, 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 me. That's a mindset of the world. The mindset of the world is telling you that you can do anything you put your mind to. But you're a preacher saying if it's in your mind because of your perception, it will always be there. But once you get it out of your mind, it's gone. That's nonsense. That's a lie. That's a lie. You have to be changed. The scripture says, do not conform no longer to the patterns of this world, but be changed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can't be renewed unless you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, meaning you're a new man, meaning you've repented, meaning you're now a child of God. In the scripture of John chapter 1, it tells you in no uncertain terms that those of us who have received him, he 
gave them the right to become a child of God. You will not have the mind of God unless you are a child of God. Because the person with the mind of God has the DNA of God. What's the DNA of God? It is the implanted word. It is the teaching that comes from Jesus Christ. Yes. This is not some of the sermons that's going to get you all likes and glory and big up and shout out an invitation to places. I don't care. I don't care. I'm doing what my fathers command me to do. Amen. And this is a new year, a new time. We can't be business as usual. People are perishing. People are going to hell. We have family members that are going to hell. So now we have to change. I say to you, we may have many plans. We may have many plans talking about how we're going to do this and do that. But because we have left God out of our plan. Yes, the scripture tells us that we are to make a plan, you know. We are to make a plan. No man build a tower unless he plan for it. We make plan, but your plan must be in accordance with God if it is his will. Because Proverbs 19 verse 21, it tells you that there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel or the Lord's purpose will stand. You can plan to marry this beautiful woman that you've met, but God don't want you to marry her. You may be planning to move over that side, but God don't want you to move. You may be planning to jump ship. God don't want you to jump ship. You may be saying, I've been going to this church a long time. And you know, I am just here. My granddaddy was here. He found the church. My mommy was here. I got married here. I got everything I'm here. I remember Sunday school right here. But God wants you to move. God wants you to move. And it may be the other way around. Maybe the other way around. So stop planning or boasting about your future and leaving God about, uh, out of it. The focus scripture. I'm just getting to the focus scripture. Woohoo! James chapter 4, 13 to 17. That was an introduction. James cautioned us not to boast about business as usual. Verse 13 to 17, James was talking, about, talking to business people. Because the business people of this mindset of the world, many of them, in this situation, they did have that mindset. James cautioned us, warned us in today's day principle about boasting. Look at chapter, look at verse 13, 4, 13, it says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Mm, let us break it down. Come now means wait up, hold up, hold a minute. What are you talking about? You who say, meaning you who are boasting in your ability. You who are exalting yourself because you have some money in the bank. You who have excluded God from your day-to-day -day business, from your lifestyle. And some people will get frivolous and say, Pastor, does that mean even tying my shoe? Yeah. You get up and you thank God for health. You thank God for strength. Thank God for your ability to do things. But God knows what's in your heart. So you don't have to go down and say, okay, um, um, you, you, as you say the whole day on your knee praying, to put on your pants, you'll even pray for kneeling down and praying. And so that's the reason we need the teaching that Jesus presented to us. Give us this day our daily bread. You should go and decipher that. Break it down and then you will understand. And then you will know how to pray. Many of us in Christendom, we don't know how to pray. And because we do not know how to pray, we cannot see the move of God within our lives. We cannot hear from God. You said, how do I hear from God? Many of you are looking for God to come and whisper in your ears, this is what you do. The word is the word of God. If you are subjected to the word, if you build a relationship with the word, you will hear through the scriptures. And so James says, come now. Meaning, Wait up, listen, you who have ex excluded God from your day-to-day -day activities, you are saying you're making plans, you're going to do this. Come now, we don't want any God within us. We have all the money, we have all the links. We're moving over there, we're going to do that. You know, this, this, it says, 
we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell. Presumptuous people do those things. Come now, let us invest in the stock market. Come now, let us go into cryptocurrency. Let's pour everything into it. Today you're, today you're wealthy. Woo, look at this, I have struck it, man. By the time you blink and turn around and look at your computer screen, you have zeros. Because that's how the stock market works. You have excluded God. You are a presumptuous person. The person who boasts in his or own ability is self-assured and does not rely on God. Self-assurance is an evil thing. You have to have God within your life. Yes, we're breaking down some fiction. We're breaking down some fables. We're breaking it down. We're demolishing it. We're stepping on it and we're crushing it. You got to come back to fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Come back to the word of God. The person who boasts in his or own ability is self-assured and has not asked God for any permission or guidance. Ooh, I see her. She's so beautiful. Um, I'm going to get her. Throw everything off. You run away and you do all that thing and then you have heartache. But thank God for grace. That is, he'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us orphaned. I'll never, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You cannot boast and do not know what will come tomorrow. And so James in, in verse 14 says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. For what is your life, boastful people? It is brief. Note the term vapor. You say, but I am living and I'm 90 years old. With the Lord the days as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So you're nothing in the grand scheme of things to God. And I say, the older you are in age, the older you are in age is the closer you are to going away. The closer you are to going away. So you may be living all these years, but your life is still a vapor. Have you ever seen a, a jet flying over and you see the wake trail? That white fume you see coming out in the clouds. It goes for miles. And you're looking at it and looking at it and then it just dissipates and you don't see it anymore. That's how fleeting life is for some of us. It's there. It's evident to the man and woman. Man, many people can see it. You're not famous because you've done such and such. But in a flash, in an instant, it's gone and you're forgotten. Nobody will see you anymore, know about you anymore. You may be in monuments and buildings. People just go through the door and slam the door. They don't even care about your name on the building. All they want to do is go in there for their business. For what is your life? You boasters, it's brief. It's nothing but a vapor. That's what James said. And the person who, the person who like to, to boast in their own strength, thinking they got it all, they're nothing but a fool. They say, ooh, preacher, you're calling them a fool. Yes, I have the authority to do so. I'm not calling my brother in Christ a fool. You, you, you do not call your brother in Christ a fool when you really know that they are really of God. People who are not of God, who do things without God, who do not own God or have a fellowship with God, who do not love God. The scripture terms them a fool. It says the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Jesus even gave you an example. Look at Luke 12, 16 to 20. This was, a, this was a, the situation of a, a rich man, a man who was position, a man who was wealth, a man who was everything. Look at verse 16, it says that. The ground of a certain rich man yield plentifully. Not just any man, you know, a certain man. That means this is a man with status. This is a man who had it made. The ground yield plentifully, meaning his investment had good return. His investment, he had all the money in the stock market, all the money in the bank. He had real estate, he had cars, he had, he had precious metal wealth. Meaning he had a lot of goals, a lot of everything. Things were happening for him. 
a certain man, the scripture says, and I tell you about the presumptuousness of the, of the fool, and listen to what Jesus said. He said, and he talked with himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? I told you about fools. What shall I do? You can repent. So he said, I will do this. I will put down my bonds, pull down my, and build greater one. Because his investment is bringing so much return. And there I will store all my crops and all my goods. I got to get several other bank accounts, six bank accounts. I got to get a banking in the Cayman Island, banking in Sweden. I got to be banking all over the place. And, in, and, and banking too, I got to buy cryptocurrencies and I got to, in, I got the precious metal wealth. I have to have real estate. I have to have it all to secure myself. And then after I have done that, I say to myself, oh boy, you've made it. You pull, my, pull myself up by the bootstrap. That's what this man was saying. He was saying, my souls, you've made good and laid up for many years. Take ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, I tell you, God called people fool, you know, when they do not belong to him. God says, fool. This night, the same time that you're planning to do things because you have money, because you have health, because you have strength, because you have education, because your social economic status is so solid. You have rejected and neglected God, but God says, thou fool. You see, you are a fool if you do not have God in your life. You are a fool. If you're boasting and you're holding on to your own ability to do certain things. Yes, this year we're coming out swinging. The truth is, it's saying, the ground of a certain rich man, a certain, not just any man, when the scriptures speak about a certain man or a certain thing, pay attention. It is a certain. It's not just any person. It is someone in society. A certain. That's a great adjective. A certain. You can, your imagination can run wild when you hear about a certain. You can imagine his clothing. You can imagine where he is living. You can imagine his chariots. You can imagine his fields. You can manage the cup that the, the goblet that he's drinking his wine. You can imagine his pinky ring on his finger. You can imagine his, 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 his purple garment and all of that stuff. You can imagine when he walks through the room, people bow down, people kiss his ring. You can imagine him, him, him giving away food to the poor and calling people and say, come and look, come and look at this. See this? I just, I just tear down that old barn. Give, give everything away to those people over there. They, they need it. As a matter of fact, I had those a long time. I need to get rid of them. Give it to them. It expires in two weeks. Give it to them. Don't let it go to waste. Build bigger barns. Store up more stuff. Fool do those things. And the truth is many of us are storing up for our future and neglecting God. I'm not telling you don't plan. Uh, you're going to see where, when you listen to what I'm saying, you're neglecting God by doing all these things. Neglecting God So you're a fool because you do not care to God, care about God. You only care for substance. You care for hype. You care about pleasing society. But if you do everything with God, blessed by God, supplied by God, who can stand against you? Keep your God. The fool will say, I have money. I don't need your God. Look at what, show me what your God has done for you. Tell me what your God has done for you. Look at what I've done for myself. But you're looking at his wall. It's like 15 feet high with razor wires, security camera everywhere. He's got men with guns everywhere guarding him. Bulletproof car, everything. And you who do not have anything, you walk down the street by yourself. You live in a little shack, you sleep with your doors open, no one coming in, and you have what is called a P. 
peace that surpasses all understanding. And you can eat every day. When the rain falls, it's falling on this big mansion and it's falling on yours too. It's falling. And so, the scripture says right here, Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. So stop boasting about your futures, my brothers and sisters. And, and, and start listening. And when you listen and you hear, become a doer of the word. But many people say, but, but preacher, I'm going to church and I'm here. And, and, and these preachers are giving me great advice. They're giving me a blessing plan. And they're telling me about all these things and, and this prophet, the man of God. Everybody's a man of God these days, you know. They like to call him man of God, woman of God. But which God? The God of this age or the true one living God? Because you have the God of this age, you know. And you have the true and living God. Many people are boasting in the God of this age. And so they will go to spiritualists. Palm readers, divinators. And so the prophet Jeremiah back then was talking to the children of Israel who were in exile. And they were listening to those nonsense people, false prophet, people who were giving divination. And so the Lord said, Go and talk to the people. Jeremiah 29. Look at verse 18. Look at verse 8. For thus say the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Listen carefully. Do not let your prophets, not God prophets, do not let your prophets and your diviners who you are in the midst deceive you nor listen to your dreams which you, which you cause to be dream. For they fall, they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, say the Lord. God have not sent them, and then listen to God now. In verse 10. For thus say the Lord, Jeremiah again, after 70 years of accomplish. Listen. I'm going to break this down to you. Many of you who are listening to these false prophets, false preachers every day, coming and telling about God of your blessing in your name of it. And you go to your bed and you dream that, I dream that I'm having a big car, a big house, your own mindset, your own perception. Back then people were doing the same thing. They were in bondage and they want to get out. And so they, go to, they go to people who tell them the things that they want to hear. But here comes Jeremiah. Different from the rest. Proclaiming, thus say the Lord. Many people don't understand when you say, thus say the Lord, what it means. When you say, thus say the Lord, it means it must happen as I say. It must happen as I prescribe. It will not change. That's what it means when you hear, thus say the Lord. God said to them, thus say the Lord of of us, the God of Israel. Thus say the Lord God today to you who are listening to false prophet, to you who are going to palm readers, to you who are carrying your little charm, wearing your little rings, to you who want a big church so you indulge with people from the dark side. Thus say the Lord, stop listening to your own dream. Stop going to those false prophets. Stop listening to diviners. Stop going to palm readers. <laughs> They prophesy falsely in my name. Many of them call in the name of God. Heal in Jesus' name. Heal. I've seen someone praying for someone that, you know what? You are going, you, what was the person? Something about their hand is going to, it's going to just heal right now. And they're praying and they're praying and they're praying. And nothing happened and they just move on slowly to the next person. Leave the person still with the hand. It reminds me when the prophet, the prophet was standing there sitting, looking at all those prophets of Baal, beating themselves and whipping themselves and crying. Pray hard or your God must be sleeping. <laughs> but thus said the Lord, Jeremiah had to tell them in verse 10, after 70 years, it doesn't matter if those people told you 
years ago, you're going to get a breakthrough tomorrow. They're at all, you're going to be living. But God said, listen, Jeremiah, tell them, after 70 years, I don't care what they have heard, who they have been to. I don't care how much their head was wrapped, how dark the room was, how many chickens they kill, how many bloods they sprinkle, how many vials you bury under the earth, how many times you jump around and spin around, how many times you throw salt over your, over your back, break bones, break bottles. I don't care how many times you have done that. I don't care how much you have sold out to the dark side. For thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. These things must happen. And thus said the Lord. If you don't repent, you're going to hell. People don't want to hear that. But again, thus said the Lord. It's a term that clearly describes that God said it's going to happen the way it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do to change it. How many times some of you are guilty? I don't know about some of you in my, in my presence. <laughs> but many people are guilty. Guilty today. Leaving church today and going to their charmer. Looking for a way out. I've done something real bad on the job. They're going to fire me. God has ordained that. You're going to be leaving that work. Here. Take this little thing, sprinkle it right there. When they walk and they step on it, they'll never fire you. You go in and you hear that you're fired. They say, what? What? You know the reason for that? Because it's thus say the Lord. And so Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 13 says, Consider the work of God. Who can make straight what he has made crooked? What is the meaning of that, brothers and sisters? If God has ordained something, nobody can change it. I don't care where you want to sugarcoat it. I don't care where you want to burn it in the fire. I don't care where you want to beat it up. Oh, oh, I can change it, man. It's just a little bit crooked. Let me beat it up. You beat it out with your lies. And things don't change. And then the people, still foolish, don't see that it's a lie. Don't decide to change your evil ways. And so James, back to James. Back to James, James 4, 17. James says, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him is a sin. I tell you, boasting is a deadly thing, it's arrogant. Boasting in your own ability and in my, my own future. Man, look at this. Ooh, I'm going to do this. You know you ought to give God thanks. And so James is saying, therefore, to him who knows to do good, to do good, how can you do good? You can do good by acknowledging that God is the author and the finisher of your faith. You can do good by giving thanks to God. Yeah. You don't have to come out in the public and put your hand up in the air and shout out every day to your neighbors, thank you, Lord, for this car. You're a boasty, showing off, arrogant. You can even drive in your car down the street and in your mind you're saying, oh, thank you, God. Yes, God, you're good to me. You meet in an accident, your car is no longer, no longer good. You don't come out and start cursing. You say, thank you, God, for sparing my life. So James is saying, knowing, knowing, knowing. It says right here again, therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him is a sin. Knowing that God is in charge. Knowing that God gives you the ability to earn. Knowing that God gives you the ability to learn. Knowing that God gives you the ability to maintain your family. To secure your job. To live in a place where you're not being persecuted for your faith. Knowing all of this and you fail to give God thanks. Knowing that, it is a sin. It is called a sin of omission. You leave God out of it. I don't want people to know. I don't want them to call me a Jesus freak. Man, 
when I go home I'll just do it secretly what did Jesus say if you deny me before man I will deny you before my father he will disown you many of us are working to be disowned so stop the boasting about your future and do not be proud or wise in your own eyes don't you know don't you know that God resists the proud he said what do you mean preach yeah it's in it's in the Bible James chapter 4 verse 6 I think I should be funny when I'm giving you this because some of you digest it with a little fun but it's serious listen James 4 verse 6 but he gives he gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble when you are proud when you're not humble when you're a show off you're walking with the enemy you are against God you're in bed with the world you listen to counsel of the world you lean on your own understanding you do you you you're not submitting to God you have not drawn close to God and the same James chapter 4 listen to verse 8 draw near to God meaning stop your boasting draw near to God give it to God and he will draw near to you God is not going to draw near to those of us who are boasting we're not giving the glory and the honor to him if you have to boast boast in Christ tell people what God has done for you give a testimony and so God can get the glory and not you and so he says resist the devil and he will flee from you every time you decide to give credit to yourself look at look at me look 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 what I've done you get you're taking everything from God and what the scripture says, God resists the proud and when God resists the proud guess who is on the other side the devil because you're not drawing closer to God you're drawing closer to the devil with your boasting and your arrogance exalting yourself I tell you what you know I, I mean I'm just gonna go out and I'm just gonna get a new one because I can do it um, my investment just come true and the scripture says draw near to God and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your heart you double-minded in church today but you're a boastful person in society pretending God is good all the time all the time God is good that's cliche we already know that God is good you don't have to go around and participate in cliche saying sometimes someone say God is good and I don't say nothing I'm walking there probably thinking like who what you don't mean it you double mind person why should I be participating in your cliche? I already know that God is good. He wake me up this morning. He give me strength. Yes. I thank him. Yes. Many of you have to cleanse your hands and purify your heart. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, when you see the wicked participating and getting on and going through and getting under the life of the party and you're saying man what happened to me man look how long I've been waiting I've been waiting for so long and, and, I, and I can't seem to get a break there's no breakthrough for me when is it gonna happen for me Look how long I'm waiting for a husband. And God, you're telling me to wait. Look at that nice, tall, dark, and handsome fellow. He come and he's gone. Don't you see he's beating up that woman? God rescue you. I said, but God, look at that. What did the scripture say? Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not fret or fret not thyself because of evildoers. The old version says. Eh? 
nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither away as green herbs. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. That's the part that people forget. They forget the part that says delight yourself in the Lord. Nobody wants to delight themselves in the Lord. People want to boast in their own ability. But when you delight yourself in the Lord you're boasting in God you're boasting this is what God has done for me you're living your life as a testimony and so this is what it's all about this is what it's all about and you have seek him diligently and then he decide to bless you decide to give you the wife because you've delighted yourself in him you seek him diligently and he bless you with the house because you are seeking him and you're delighting yourself in him and sometimes even after you've delighted yourself in him, wail in him, cry to him, scream to him, rub your knees off to him, fast night and day to him, he may decide he's not giving you that house or those things that you want. Because guess what? Guess what? It's not for you. The scripture says he give to us good and perfect gifts. So we may think it's good, but it's not good. It's not good. Give and it says every good and perfect gift come from the Lord above. Every good and perfect gift. And if God is going to give it to you, it must be good and perfect. Because God only gives us perfect gifts. He said that don't make no sense to you, it don't. You want the house that costs 50 million dollars. How much for the taxes? How much for the upkeep? He said, God, you just give me this little apartment and this little job. Do you have the fortitude to handle that job? Do you know how much headache it, it, it takes for that position? God, I, I, I want to be the preacher. Do you know how much blame preachers get? Do you know every day people talk about the preachers eating the money? <laughs> Look at the preacher. Look at his car. Look at his house. It's the church money. Poor preacher. Huh? Look at the preacher. Look at the school that his kids are going to. Nobody saw when the preacher was toiling through the night, you know. Nobody saw those things. And, and look at the members in the church. Look at how they are living. Who told you that they are drawing closer to God? Many of them are just in church because they want some stuff. They're using God as a piggy bank. And as soon as they get it, they're gone. Gone. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, stop the boasting about your future. Boast in God. Because He is good. And He gives every good and patient and, and perfect gift. I leave you with Psalm 37, verse 7. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. You see that? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways. Because the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. <laughs> you see that? You see how good God is? But you don't want to read those scriptures. You don't want to accept it. But then you're going to say, oh, his grace is sufficient for me. No, you're a lie. But anyhow, stop the boasting about your futures. Boast in God. Depend on God. If it is His will, it will come to pass. In Jesus' name, Amen.